So let me talk a little bit about CDC and I'm gonna put a couple CDC feathers in the, in the camera here. And I'll have to adjust the phone so that you can see them. Actually, let me shift this guy over here. So CDC, for those of you who don't know what it is, it is actually um, a little bitty feather from, let me get this, there we go, from the back end of a bird. And they all have this area where CDC comes from, but CDC is from ducks. And see, the, the letters CDC stand for cool de canard, which means duck's bottom. And the CDC feathers come from around the preen gland on the bird. And this is not, when I first heard duck bottom, I thought it was like on their butt underneath by their chlore chloraca, but it's actually not. It's up on top where their tail meets their back. And that's where the preen gland in, is. And what the birds do is they, um, they rub that gland with their beak and they that causes the gland to secrete oil that they make and then they take their beak and they rub that on their feathers to um, keep their feathers in good condition. So consequently these little feathers from right around the gland have the, the oil that the bird normally secretes from the gland. And there are three lengths of CDC feathers that are typically used for fly tying. And there are the, um, the one on the right is the smallest one. It's a, it's a puff and they're about a centimeter long. And then the one in the, on the left is a uh, medium sized one. And they range from about uh, one and a half to two to maybe um, three centimeters. And then there are actually some bigger ones that we're not gonna talk about today. that are used for other applications. But you can use these for a number of applications. A lot of people use the use them for wet flies, and they are a really good feather for wet fly. I'm sorry for dry flies because of the oil. And I don't know if I can zoom in on that even better. You can kind of see that the. Um, well, I don't know if you can see that the if you can see that these these um, fibers have little side branches on them. And that's why they're a really good dry fly feather and why they hold, and that they hold the oil there. So they actually will hold air pretty well because of those little fibers. Now you can also use them for wet flies for, for um, the, the bigger, the longer ones people sometimes use to actually, they'll palmer them on the body or you can use them on a wing on an emerger. And you can use them as tails too. So they're really a pretty versatile little feather. And what I really like about them is that you just use the whole feather, so it's easy to mount. So the other thing um, I wanted to just touch on real quickly because I'm going to talk to you about the feather, the the tails that I sometimes use. So a lot of times when I first started tying, I was just frustrated because I would go to tie a fly and I wouldn't have the right tail material, and so I just started getting creative. And I think Al talked a little bit about this. So here is a um, this is a partridge. And what I started doing is I started using these longer feathers that they're too long for a soft hackle. I tie a lot of soft hackles, but these are just too long. But as you can see, these fibers are really very long. So when you go to mount them for a tail, they're really easy to use because they're so long, kind of like a, um, like a mallard flank. So the, these really are either, they really are from the flank of the bird or on, in this case, kind of the rump, um, or, but they're also in the flanks here. So all these feathers are really good for tails. And the nice thing about these, part, these um, partridges is that they have some, some barring to them. So they're cool for, for tails. And then the other bird that I use a lot is um, a pheasant skin. So this is a whole pheasant skin. And you can see that there's a, an array of colors in, in these um, flank feathers and, and that the fibers easily separate. So you can use them for tail feathers pretty easily because you can see they, they separate out. And again, they're nice and long. So you can easily handle them when you're trying to tie on a feather. And if you look at these, there's so many different colors. Here's some nice gray ones. These are sort of green ones. 
And if you go under here, you can see that there are some, you can see these ones at the end are more of a brown color. So in this one skin, you have several different colors that you can use for your tails. So that's just something I wanted to touch on real quick because for this particular fly, I'm gonna use a, um, for the tail, I'm gonna use a, a pheasant uh, flank feather. So let me go ahead and put a, um, uh, a hook in here and I'll get this focus back on the camera here. I'm back on the fly. So is there anybody tying today? You taught me into it. All right, good, Patty. I am. So, I'm gonna try, Susan. All right, good. Let me get this vice back in view here. There we go. And hopefully that'll stay in focus. And people. And everybody's can see. muted. So if you have a a question for Susan, she's real good about interrupting and answering and uh, she'll give you a great answer and uh, yeah if you're tying we'd love to see what you're going to do at the end no pressure though tie and enjoy it yeah that a little bit bigger and a little bit and I think that's pretty good let me there Okay, so you can just go ahead and start your thread as usual. You can start it just a little bit behind the eye. And go ahead and wrap back to the, the bend. What, what size hook are you using, Susan? Oh, this is a 16. I don't usually tie them this big. Um, I usually tie like anywhere from an 18 to a 22. Um, but I, this is a 16 just so that it would be easier for people to see what I'm doing. Still trying to get my light as good as I can. So again, just go back to the bend. And if you're inclined to do so, which I am just because I am not that picky, I make a little bump there at the very back and that kind of helps my tail stay on. And then you're going to to come back to about the halfway point or a little forward of that and get yourself a couple no more than three on this little guy I usually just put two um, fibers from your tail feather whatever you're going to use uh, duck flank is fine uh, saddle flank it, saddle fibers are fine whatever Whatever you use, it doesn't really much matter. Now, a lot of times when I tie in my tails, I will try to eyeball about where I want it, but I'll err on the side of being too long because I can always put on a couple loose wraps and make sure it's on the top. And then if it's too long, I can just pull it back a little bit and get it to the right length. And that was actually a little bit too much pulling back. So I'm going to pull it back up, back out. So that looks about the right length. It's about the length of the shaft or maybe a little bit shorter. I mean, it is a mayfly, so they're supposed to have those long, long tails. But I don't know that the fish are that picky. And mostly when I tie, I tie the fish. I don't get all that picky about it. And if you don't like the way your tail is standing up, you can go underneath of it, underneath the two or the three, if you put on three, um, your three fibers. And then come back, you can go ahead and rip off the remainder. And what you wanna do is give your body a little bit of a taper. I do not even bother to um, dub this fly. I just make the body out of the thread. And, and again, I'm usually, tying them smaller than this guy. So you wanna give it a little bit of a taper and then go ahead and tie a little bit forward of where your, your third, you wanna be back to about the one third um, from the eye hook, from the hook eye. So now I'm gonna take my CDC puff that hopefully I didn't ruin. So I've got my CDC puff here and I'm gonna tie it in so that uh, the, the stem, and you can see the stem there, and the stem, and on the puffs you can see the stem 
ends and then it's all puff. That's it's all fiber. That's why they call it a puff. So you can see that I've not, I'm putting the stem right on top of the hook, but I'm not going to tie it in where the puff, where the fibers leave the stem. I'm going to have a little stem sticking up. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to go ahead and tie this in, then I'll hold it up so you can see it. And we had a question. Um, what colors in different seasons or light? Well, this is, you know, traditionally a PMD pale, uh, pale morning done. Um, but it really depends on the hatch. I mean, you have your blueing olives that are a gray mayfly and the pale morning duns are a, a yellow mayfly that usually come off, you know, and you see them mostly in the mornings. But you could tie them, you could tie the little bitty purple hazes if you wanted. And in fact, you could probably do the same pattern with a bigger fly and put on two puffs. I have a friend who puts on two puffs. So you could put on more puffs and have a bigger wing on a bigger fly if you wanted, but it really depends on, on where you're fishing. Okay, lady. Oh, sorry. So now after I've got this tied on, you, you can see I can kind of make it stand up. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wet the fibers down a little bit so that they don't, aren't quite so unruly. And I'm just gonna make a figure eight around that stem that's sticking up on the top. I'm just gonna figure eight around it so that it's sticking straight up and now it's it's a little bit more in better placement. So just sticking straight up like that, I've just made a figure eight right at the base of that stem. So I'll let Patty catch up with me. And have a sip of wine while I'm at it. <laughs> Is anyone besides Patty tying? Oh, the pressure's on. I think the pressure's on. David. I'm trying. Carol. I'm, I'm giving well, it a try. Slow down. Yeah. So I think you have. I think you have a couple more. Okay. Get that to. Susan, slow down. Well, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Boy, my wraps aren't very flat. I should have taken a little more time perhaps. And now that it's magnified, it looks terrible. You can untwist your thread to get a, a pretty, you know, a prettier body. But I don't know that the fish much care. I tied about 50 of these and sent them out to a guide in Montana and he used them. These and the, and the BWOs. Okay. You can just tie, I think I can tie these a lot quicker than than the um, traditional ones. And I don't find any difference, except that I can see them better on the, on the river. I didn't have a puff, a CDC puff. I just had the little feather and mine looks pretty awful. Kind of looks like the a queen's crown. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be harder to get it to, to, to behave itself. Um, another question, Susan, from Kim. Can you use floss for the body? Oh, sure. You can use whatever you want. I just tie them so tiny that, that I don't even mess with, you know, you can, I don't, I don't dub them. I don't, I don't do anything but just use thread and you can use whatever you want. The main idea here is to just um, see how you can use the puff instead of Trying on, trying to tie on those stinking little wings, you know. You can get as creative as you want with both of these flies that we're going to do today. Susan, do you have to be careful with what kind of uh, ointment you put on it uh, to keep it to float? Yes, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up because if you put too much silicone, you're kind of ruin the the effect of this. The, the character of the CDC puff because the silicone will gunk up those little bitty fibers. Mm -hmm. So I will dress this with silicone, but I keep the silicone off the puff. Hmm. Yeah. David, I, are you tying? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, All right. I think, I think we deal. have five or six that are tying. Susan, did you get your question answered about Antron? No, not no. Antron or some other substitute instead of the puff? Is that possible? You know, you could, but I tell you what, this little puff 
I mean, it is just so easy to mount on the, on the, you know, to tie in because of, let me get this one in the tweezers, because it's, this little stem is there. And okay. I certainly, have, I've tied um, purple hazes with Antron wings instead, but this little, you know, you got that little stem there, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the little stem is just perfect for mounting. It's just so easy to tie them in. And that's why I like them because they're easy to tie in. Um, I have used these on Davy Watton does a, a midge. It's called the Davy Watton midge, super midge or whitetail midge. And he uses a CDC, a regular CDC on his. Um, put this one up. This is one of his, this is one of mine that I tied. And you can see, I just used a puff because that's what I had. But it just makes a great little tail. And but he normally uses a regular puff. I mean a regular CDC, a regular medium sized CDC. But the, the puff works fine on the tails and they work good for emerger wings. And and I just I really like the CDC because it's you don't have to cut it, you don't have to do anything except pull it out of the bag and tie it on. It's ready to go. Ready made material, you know, ready, ready to ready cut and prepped, I should say, ready prepped material to tie in. Miss Nancy has joined us. All right. If oh, anyone my. wants to bid on Miss Nancy's uh, beautiful portrait that she has hand painted, she is a, well, I was going to say famous artist in Little Rock, but maybe infamous would be a better <laughs> word. Yes, Even better. Being said about that, yes, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll hide we'll spotlight that beautiful picture um, yeah, before we good. go because it's yeah. It's oh, are we waiting for people to come on? Because I got a question. Uh, we're waiting for people to catch up time, but you certainly have, uh, welcome to ask a question. No, 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 no not about this talk. Something oh. else. Okay. Susan, um, I'm kind of excited about this puff because I've uh, they you know we have stock trout over here in Oklahoma. And yeah. they just put them in. They just put them in about oh, not quite a month ago. And uh, any rate, so I've been able to catch a number of fish on dry flies. But the trouble is, it's just hackle on dubbing. Yeah. And it it seems to uh, collect a lot of water, and I'm constantly having to try to dry it off. So I'm wondering yeah. if this CDC puff, if I add it onto the hackle, um, if it'll help help it float a little bit better. It probably would. The other thing that I, it, the other thing about dry flies is you have to be careful what dubbing you use. You should really use a dry fly dubbing like um, uh, super fine. The yeah. other thing that I have gone to for a lot of my uh, dry fly um, abdomens, in, um, now the thoraxes, you can't really do that, but I use this stuff. And Gretchen and Al sell, sell something that's similar, I think, right? Al? Yes. That's correct. Yeah. So this is uni stretch. And I forget what's the what's the stuff that you sell, Al? It's called Danville Nylon Stretch. Yeah. So this stuff, I really like it for dry fly abdomens because it doesn't absorb as much water as um, dubbing does. Oh. Yeah. So I like it a lot. Oh, uh, but the other thing I use is, you know, super fine. And there's another, mm -hmm. there are other brands that are like that. And I think Gretchen and I'll have one that they sell as well. That's a dry fly dubbing. But the dry fly dubbings that are specifically for dry flies don't absorb as much water. So you don't have that problem as much. But the other thing is that, well, once they get snarted by the fish, you know, then you got to redress them. But I typically yeah. will put silicone before I ever um, get it wet. And then once it's gotten wet or snarted by fish slime, then I dry it off, clean it off and dry it off as best I can. And then I put the, put it in dry shake, which is- Is there anything you do to this, to the, uh, to the CDC beforehand, or do you just dry it after you bring it in? Nope, just dry it off. Okay. And, and the whole fly can go in dry shake once, you know, once it's been wet and snarted, but you don't want to gunk that CDC up with a bunch of silicone is the thing. Okay. Thank yeah, you. 
you can see those little fibers are so nicely separated and the, and the silicone will just make them glump together and then it won't act like it normally would. So are we caught up pretty much? Okay, so now we're just gonna take our, um, get my black background here. I guess you can pretty much see that. We're gonna take a, a, a saddle hackle or a, a neck, whichever you'd prefer. I like the saddles cause I'll sit and tie a dozen or more flies of the same pattern. And so with one nice long saddle ha hackle, I can tie a lot of flies. So we're just gonna tease out the the fibers like I did here and then trim them off. I don't like to strip the um, fibers because I think it makes the uh, shaft of the feather weak, right, where you've stripped it off. And so then it is more likely to break. So then we're just gonna tie this in, get your thread in front of the CDC puff and tie it in so that you have a little bit of the uh, exposed feather shaft behind the CDC puff. So you're going to go ahead and tie it in at the front. And, and that's again with the shiny side towards you or the convex side towards you. And then go behind a couple, two or three wraps and then bring your thread back to the front and clip off the excess stem. And then bring your thread to just behind the eye. Now you can either wrap with, um, with a rotary or you can just do by hand if you have a nice long feather like this. And I will tend to kind of get that CDC a little moist with some saliva so that it's out of the way. And then I usually do two wraps behind the CDC puff, hopefully not catching it, and usually three in front just because that way when I'm, when I catch the, the, when I catch the feather to tie it off, I don't, I have sort of extra feather to to lose, if that makes any sense. So I do two in the back, three in the front, but you can certainly put on as much hackle as you like. That's a personal choice. And then I'll catch the feather and push it back and wrap it, wrap and wrap it a little bit and then clip it off. And then you just form a head and do your whip finish. Looks like I've got that feather to come down a little bit in the way, but there you go. It's not perfect. My my head is not going to be perfect, but that's all right. And then clip your thread. The last step is to get that CDC a little bit moist so you can control it and trim it to the length you like. I like it just a teeny smidge above my hackle, but not too long. And that's it. They're very simple, quick little mayfly. You can, again, PMDs, BWOs, whatever you like, any color you want. It's just really quick and easy and much, much less frustrating than the wings you normally put on a, a little bitty mayfly. That in the float better. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, though you know, I think you'll find they'll float better. Of course the, the PMDs and BWOs are supposed to mimic um, mayflies that are emerging and they're they're when mayflies hatch they sit on the surface of the water to dry their wings. So this is really supposed to um, mimic that and they tend to be down in the surface film. Maybe it but at least for as you get older, it's really hard to tell where the heck that fly is. And I just find I can see that puff better than I can um, a regular BWO. And much easier to tie or PMD, either one. Or, or well, Susan, the, the puff is not necessarily so much for extra floatability. It's more for visibility. For both, actually. I think it makes it, it definitely makes to float better than the, the little, the normal wings you put on it. I mean, some would argue with me that it's not really supposed to float above the water, which, but it, it does sit down, you know, at the, 
at the water surface. I mean, it's a small fly, right? So it's not going to go very high above the water anyway. Um, but the, the CDC definitely makes it float better and I can see the darn thing. Now, let me show you another trick. Let's say you didn't like the way it was floating. You wanted it further down in the water. Or you wanted to turn this puppy into a spinner. Let's see if I can do this without, so you can see me. Just take your scissors and flip it off. Oh, so that makes it go deeper. Oh, that makes wings go down in a spinner. So just clip the bottom off. We had a question. Um, could you use this with a dropper? No, it'll sink. It'll sink. It's too little. It tips it up. I mean, it's better for it to be sitting with the... Could, but it becomes a wet fly. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a baby fly, you know, too little. So now, now it's a spinner of sorts. So uh, are we ready for show and tell yet? Sure. Ooh, let's see. Patty, you ready to show yours? Well, I, I am, but I didn't have, you know, I just grabbed stuff, so I didn't have all the right stuff. But I, I uh, and I don't Do I need to stop sharing, Sandy? I think I do, do I? Uh, huh? Oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're on the screen, so. Lock it off. There we go. There we go. Okay. Anyway, it's oh, uh, good, yeah, it's I, I I didn't have the right colors. I didn't have anyway. doesn't matter. Yeah, I bet, it, I bet it'll catch a fish anyway. It's all you, about you. You could make me fifty of those, and I would try it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> would you take twenty five? <laughs> all right, who who else? Let's see. I have Denise, Gerald. Who else am I finding here? Oh, there, Susan's got hers up. Let me spotlight you. There we go. Oh, that was with the other kind of CDC. <laughs> oh, nice. That looks good. That looks good. Well, wow. I think I cut my CDC a little too short. It's definitely not looking too good. <laughs> well, if you get the puff, you know, if you get a puff, it'll it'll look better because yeah. it'll stand straight up like it should. Okay. But I, you know, it's very buggy. It's very buggy. Yeah, I think I needed a shorter hackle. I don't know. May maybe. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think you're right. But anyway, it's it's very buggy, and it'll catch fish. Okay. Well, thank bet, you. Bet it will. All right. Let's see. Uh, oh, oh. There's David's. Let me get. Let me get David I, up. All right. We are. I did the. That looks good. Oh, I did the same. Good. I did the same thing. I used, I put the CDC puff too far back and too much hackle compared to Susan's. But um, I'm, I kind of like that idea of trimming it off flat on the bottom. Yeah, I mean, you can, you know, if 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 you think it needs to ride further down in the water, then trim it off. You can. I mean, that's not typically how a how a BWO or PMD is is tied. They usually have hackle underneath too. But hey, you know, sometimes. You don't have the right fly and you can just trim that sucker right on the stream and, and now it becomes like a little spinner. You cool. you need to let that know if that works on your fish there. Yeah, yeah, it will. Can I Patty, can I show I'll show you what I was catching all these these are stalkers, but they're uh, most people are fishing them with for nymphs, but they seem to be hitting these midges and so this is what oh, I yeah. tied. And uh -huh. it's just uh, the pheasant, as Susan had said, I use the, uh, the let's see, the, what do you call it? The sides from a mallard flank. Uh -huh, the flanks, and then, yeah. And then I use a little uh, super fine tan colored uh, uh, dubbing and then just a grizzly hackle. And so yeah, you know, this, is, this, this doesn't focus very well, but yeah. Anyway, right, it's kind of dark. There's the bottom of it. It's uh, dark in the front and kind of tan in the back. And gosh, mm -hmm. those soccer trout are just killing it, for, uh, even though they're sipping on midges. And it's hey, like, I, I probably think it's dog food or trout food. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a midge. <laughs> I actually put a I actually put a bunch of 
a foam around the hook to make it look like a pellet, and I didn't have any luck. So. <laughs> yeah, I've done that too. Use a cork. Use a cork. Okay. That will work. Really? Hey, he's catching yeah. fish on his little edge. <laughs> Just well, get your piece of cork. I, we a got another one. There oh, we go. Oh, nice. Good. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's really yeah. nice. That's a good one. Christine, that's a beautiful a one. Bit, you could have trimmed it a little shorter, but other than that, it looks really great. Yeah, but didn't you think it was it was so easy to mount that CDC? It yeah. is. It's really, it is, really yeah. nice. Let's see if we have that was Denise. Did I miss anybody? Gerald, do you want to get on? Let's see. Here we go. No. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> He's muted, Patty or uh, Susan, uh, Sandy. Oh, he is muted. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I can up a little oh up. can you see it nope up a little Come more up a little bit there you go yeah. that looks good yeah good. yes it does the hackle plier doesn't keep it up very high very yeah, good yeah. <laughs> yeah so did you like the the way that mounted that cdc yeah but i had only the the standard and what oh, i okay. did is i folded it in half no oh, there we go yeah and then i clipped it yeah, looks so good. You can, do, you can do that if you only have the uh, the regular feathers. I thought I grabbed the pus, but I grabbed two bags of just the standard feathers. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. It worked. It works. Yeah. And I have no cream color uh, thread, so. Oh, I mean, well. Just a, a uh, what they call a, a duck, summer duck. Yeah, it'll be light fine. yellow. Yeah. A and light I yellow. On, on my midges a lot, so. Mm, yeah. Anyway, it's uh, kind of hard to, to see it not standing up. No, it looks good. Yeah. It looks good. Mary Beth, did you tie? Oh, you're on mute. Here, I can ask you. It's a work in progress. I'm doing it while you're talking. <laughs> she, she, quick, she quick whipped one up while we while everybody was showing her. No one was looking. <laughs> I'm all right up to the CDC. <laughs> you go. Hi, uh, Sandy. While she's yeah. while she's doing that, I want to show you something I've been playing with. Okay, hold on. Let me spotlight you. Okay. Okay. This is a little crawdad. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. oh. Wow. Is that cool or what? That's a work of art. Wow. And they aren't that I would hard boil to that do. Up and eat it. Yeah, you use rabbit. Yeah. Huh. And lots of, uh, but anyway, yeah. That's something I've been playing with. I'm trying to make, I want to learn to make about five or six different crawdad patterns. Is anyway. that one, Dwayne Haters? Oh, God. Yes, I've made Dwayne Haters. And uh, you and I were there when we were making them. He went on what? I said you and I were there when we were making them. Oh, man, that's Nancy. I thought that was Susan saying something. Yeah. We definitely made the Dwayne Hayda. But uh, anyway, this is my latest creation. And I thought this was uh, kind of simple, but I did, I, instead of using, I just used, uh, on the front, it's a jig hook instead of, uh, instead of using dumbbell eyes. Yeah. Ah. Those Dwayne Haydas are a lot of steps. Those Dwayne haters take about 45 minutes to do. Yeah. And I would never put it in the water because I'd lose it. <laughs> yes, you would in, in those waters. Here, I'll spotlight Nancy's picture. Isn't that gorgeous? It is beautiful. Yeah. Fabulous. Hmm. Well, thank and you. when she learns how to uh, spell her name, she's going she's gonna to sign it. <laughs> it is signed. It is signed. See, I told you when she learned how to spell her name, she'd do it. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna have that. Nancy is uh, graciously has graciously donated this to uh, Women Connect, and uh, we're gonna have that as a auction item at some point. How much money did we raise in the fundraiser, Patty? Well, I don't know. It was down for, uh, uh, we were up to $1,800, I know. 
Is, but, it back up, is it back up, Patty? Yes, it is. Okay. But it was down there for about a week. So, uh, and this is Giving Tuesday, guys. If y'all want to give, it'd be a great day. <laughs> oh, there you go. Good job. What are you saying good job to? Do I need to spotlight? Mary Beth. Mary Beth. Yeah, Mary she Beth. got her fly done. Mary Beth, let me spotlight you. Okay. Come over to the camera a little bit. There you go. Woo! Hey, right. Kim, before you leave, I think she's going to tie another one. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I mean, if you want me to, I'll go ahead and tie the second one. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty basic stuff, really. It's it's just a little caddis pupa. Um, and it uses the, the um, regular CVC. So this is what it looks like. Oh, I guess I need to share again, sorry. Didn't get there. But I goof, I used regular CDC on mine. Oops. The one I did. I bet it'll still catch fish. Yep, it will. It sure will. There we go. I'm getting there. Okay, so here's this other fly. So, I mean, it really is the only, it's really kind of just like a basic little midge or, or a nymph with the CDC. the CDC as a wing, but this is now the, the other CDC. So, That's if, so cute. if we have time, I can tie it. Go okay. ahead. Okay. It's, I mean, you have lots of time. Okay. What size is that? Um, this is... This is a, a 14. I need to rethread my 14. This is a 14, but I, I'm going to tie a 12 just because, again, so you guys can see. It'll be easier for you to see. So let me replace this with a proper right size hook. So this 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 can be tied on on just a, a wet fly hook, or you can also tie it on a um, on a little jig hook if you'd like. That'll work too. Let's try out of here. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I don't know if anyone wants to tie with me on this. If you are gonna tie with me, let me know, and I'll kind of slow it down. So I'm just going to start my thread and I'm going to pack this bead a little bit with, I put my bodkin into the bead and just tie some thread around the bodkin at an ang angle. And then when I release it, it goes down in that bead a little bit just so that it's, um, let's see, so that the bead doesn't slide back on my fly. And this bead may actually be a little bit big for this, this fly, but there you go. I don't think it'll much matter. And I was actually thinking about th this fly. Was, I was introduced to this fly um, by, in, in a fly shop in Wisconsin, and it calls for a tail. And I'm like, well, wait a minute here. Caddis pupa do not have tails, but I suppose it could be part of the web that it's trailing along or whatever. Anyway, it, it calls for a tail. So this is the material that I'm going to use, this is a piece of partridge flank. And you can see again how nice and long those fibers are, which just makes them easy to handle. And I don't know, I probably have five or six of them here. It's not, it doesn't have to be that exact. And that tail is going to be about, I don't know, about as a third the length of the shaft or half the length of the shaft. I'm going to go ahead and tie that tail in. We have a question about the CDC puffs. Um, mm -hmm. Susan's looking online uh -huh. and she wants oh. to know if there's a distinction with the oiler puffs. Oiler puffs? Yep. Boy, I'm not familiar with parentheses, that. oiler puffs. This is CDC puffs. That's all it should say. 
I think, unless somebody's calling it Euler puffs because it's backed by the preen gland. And this is the regular CDC. So there's just that I know of CDC and then you can get CDC long. So I'm not familiar. Al, are you familiar with Euler puffs? It's the same thing. Same thing as, as just regular CDC. Okay. That's correct. I got, yeah, I got I got hairline and it's it says CDC Euler puffs white. And that's probably because it's from the oil gland. So now I'm just getting a little piece of um, wire. This is silver wire. It's extra small because this isn't a very big fly. And I'm going to tie it on. Kate likes the way that you, 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 you packed your bead there. <laughs> yeah, I've just tied so many flies that then the bead, you know, it's just kind of sloppy up there at the front. And so I, I, a lot of times I'll pack that bead. And she, she also commented she loved your last fly and I didn't mention that. Oh, well, thank you. Now I'm gonna get for this fly, I don't know, two or three pieces of pearl. That's four, that's more than I want. That's now two. This might be a little chubby, but that's okay. And we like chubby. Yeah, we like chubby. And we're gonna just tie that in. And I'm leaving a little bit of room behind the bead because we're gonna have a collar on this thing. So I'm gonna tie that in. I'm gonna wrap right back to where my wire is, of course. And then I think I am gonna go ahead and use my spin my rotation here on this vise. And using Al's wonderful tip of leaving the, the um, bodkin in that position rather than hanging over the holder, which was a great tip. Thank you very much. And I'm just gonna wrap these. And I, I just wrap the, the um, hurl without doing a thread wrap around it, especially since I'm gonna counter wrap it. Boy, this guy's really coming out fat. Tie that in, trim it off so I don't break it. And again, I'm gonna take a half hitch and counter wrap that wire just to protect my hurl. Then I'm gonna go ahead and helicopter this wire off. I kind of, I tend to smash that wire down because I've had it break the thread. So I just smash it down with my thumbnail so it won't break the thread. And now I'm just gonna get one of these CDCs. And again, this is the regular CDC. And I'm just gonna put it on top of this fly maybe so that it's just a little bit past the, I'm gonna put it right on top. I'll turn the vise so you can see that. Just a little bit past the, um, the end of the fly. And then as you can see, hopefully, maybe you can't, I am actually holding that CDC on top and I'm hold, kind of pinching it on either side of the fly so that hopefully when I let it go, it will kind of drape around the fly. The other thing you can do is actually um, mount it and wrap it like a um, like a hackle, which might come out better if we did that. So let's let's do that that way instead. So I'm going to strip this. I am going to strip this, and let's see if that because that particular feather isn't going on all that well. See if it'll behave itself. So I'm actually going to polymer this and we'll see how it comes out. A little bit harder to do because now I have to find a hackle plier and hopefully it won't tear. So might be might be worth trying both ways, whatever works for you. on here. Okay, 
let's take a tip of that. Let's see if I can't get that to behave itself. There we go. I like that better. So I just palmered that sucker around a couple times. Now I'm just going to catch it and hopefully not break it. There we go. Now it's messy and it's more like I want to see it. I'm going to trim that little end off. Okay, that looks better to me because it's kind of fluffy all the way around. And then I'm just going to put a little collar of this dubbing that I have. It's just purple. Purple's a good color. And you can use a dubbing wax if you want. It doesn't need much of a collar. I probably already have too much on there. We'll see though. And as you can see that that dubbing collar makes that sit down. That it makes the CDC sit down. And I'm just gonna tie it off. Now I would normally put some glue on the right on the thread. So that's it. So what this creates, and this is kind of a thin CDC, but what this creates is the this imitates the, the casing of this pupa as it's getting ready to emerge. Um, I don't know if everybody knows that most caddises, when they emerge, they swim up to the surface and they shed their, their pupil case as they go up and right at the water surface, the last part of the case comes off and then they just burst through the water. So most caddis species, that's how they emerge. Some of them crawl out along the shore. Some of them swim up um, and go along some rocks and whatnot. But most, most of the caddises, they just swim up through the water and they burst through the water and then they're ready to fly, unlike mayflies and midges and, and stoneflies, which are not ready to fly. They have to dry their wings before they can actually fly. But the caddises just burst through the water. And if you've seen a caddis hatch, you'll see them just they're, it's like they're popping through the water and they're flying off. You'll see some skittering along the surface, but most of them can just fly off. So this is what this imitates. This imitates the, the, um, the casing that's still attached to the insect as it's coming up and as it's getting ready to, to emerge. So this would be fished at the bottom, but this would imitate the casing that's coming loose as it's getting ready to make its um, swim to the surface. And a couple questions, uh, mm -hmm. Susan. Um, the first one is, um, uh, uh, does, does CDC attract or create bubbles? Well, it kind of holds air because of the fibers, you know, the fiber that has so many fine little fibers that it will hold air. Now, when it's been snarted by fish, then it's not going to hold air. But when you first throw it in, it will hold air. And the more of it you have on there, the more air it's going to hold. And, and as you can see, you know, I almost put this wing on the other way and there would be nothing wrong with that. Um, here's a, this one's actually quite a long one, but you could use this as a wing, right? You could mount that as a wing like that on, a, on an emerger as long as you want it, right? And it makes it a real easy, again, it's a, it's an already prepped material. You don't have to cut it or anything. You can just, hold it on your fly and mount it. You can do the same thing with, with for tails if you'd like. They make nice little tails that have a lot of action because it's such a soft material. It's wavy in the water, which is what's great for these, these casings, You're using it to imitate casings. So it's just a great, a great material. You can certainly get creative with it. And the, uh, the other one is, um, would you discuss uh, dubbing wax a little bit? Dubbing wax on, oh, on, um, for this, like I didn't use on a slide. <laughs> wants, yeah, to discuss the use of dubbing wax. Well, dubbing wax helps you get the dubbing to stick to your thread. And depending on, on how much, like this was just a little collar, so I didn't mess with it. But if I was going to do a whole abdomen with dubbing, I probably would use a dubbing wax. And what it does is you coat your, you coat your gently or thinly coat your, your, um, your thread with the, the dubbing wax and then your wax will will just stick to it. And there's a, there's a couple ways you can put your, your I'm sorry, your dubbing will stick to the wax on the thread. And there's a couple ways you can do it. If you use a really good tacky wax, like 
Gretchen and Al cell that I still need to get. Um, you can just touch the dubbing to the to the thread and it'll stick and then you can twist it on. Or you can hold your dubbing to the side of your thread in a little wad and then pull it out as you twist it down. But the idea is then you, you have a continual strand. You're, you're dubbing, all the fibers of your dubbing are stuck together because they never really came apart from, from your little um, group of, of, from your little ball of dubbing that you had. So you could just do that. Or the, the, when you just touch it on and it sticks to a really good wax, then you don't even, it's like, it's almost like you don't have to do much effort to apply it to the thread, which sometimes is, is the hard thing that's hard about dubbing is to get it to stick to the thread so that when you twist it, it doesn't just all glump up, if that makes sense. It's you, cause you want a nice uniform strand um, of dubbed thread. You agree, Gretchen and Al? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so that is a real a real important thing when you're first learning to tie and you're learning to dub is that you don't put on too much because it's really easy to put on too much and to try to keep it really uniform. And you have to keep, and you always want to twist the same direction when you're putting your dubbing on. Because if you twist one direction and then the other, it comes back off. So basically you're making a rope of your dubbing around your thread. And uh, Al loved your pack the bead trick. So uh, oh, he, well, thanks. <laughs> he, he wants you to, uh, to uh, email that to him so he can, he can use it in his, in his tips in the fly fish fly tire magazine. And so yeah. I, so, so, you know, I would, I would probably charge him. <laughs> nah, never. You've done too much for us. Charge him one of those sticks of dubbing wax. Yeah, well, I need to get on there and get a bunch of stuff, actually. And uh, <laughs> just just make sure that your information um, that he has is correct. Okay. Um, Ma um, Marianne wants to know when would you use a dubbing loop? I don't. I've never learned to use a dubbing loop. Sorry. I've seen it done. I've just, I should learn and I should do it, but I just never have learned to do it. Sorry. <laughs> and we had a question, Patty, do you know, is the FFI site up and running yet? Yes, it's supposed to be, you're talking about for the donations? Yes, it should be back up and running. I checked it, um, I don't know, three or four days ago and it was up and running. All right, so any any uh, any more questions? I have a question for the general public here. Uh -oh. Do people know the difference between complete and incomplete metamorphosis in insects? Nobody? Okay, well that's is it the I'm over here and answer then? One has a pupa and one doesn't, right? Yes, that is true. Yes. So that may be. Uh, that's the caddis that has a pupa. The stone, yes. fly, the stone fly doesn't, right? Correct. And the midges have pupa as well. Yeah, I passed biology. Good. Yeah, yeah. So the, the stone flies and the, and the um, mayflies do not have pupa. Yeah. So I just asked because I was talking about pupa and whatnot. And um, so, Patty, my presentation on entomology might be something to consider at some point. <laughs> I think we should do that. Yes. And uh, Mary Beth, you just went to the head of the class. Okay. You're making us all look like losers. Well, hey, <laughs> I do my presentation, you will all know. So. Yeah. And, uh, George has been complimenting you all along, Susan. So okay. thank you, George. Likes the flies, and he says thank you very much. Oh, and Sally put the site up on on chat. Thank you, Sally. Thanks. The Susan. site for uh, giving it's money. The donation. Oh, thank you, Sally. Man, that's something I should have been doing, and look what Sally did. <laughs> <Here we are. laughs> what a slacker, Patty. I know man. it. Oh, man. Cracker. Thank you, Sally, for uh, taking care of me and making me not look so yeah. bad. 
You're you're on, you're on a committee, Sally. You just signed yourself up. Patty, <laughs> Patty, Patty, yes. Gretchen, I wanted to know if you'd like to me to show the hanging so you can start uh, talking about that for a later date auction or whatever. Yes. Oh yes. Yes. Oh, this so is exciting. a gorgeous hanging. So you have two of them. Well, I have, because I have one of them. No, uh, nope. her, uh, um, yeah, her, her uh, quilting, right? Quilting. Yes, her quilt that we're going to have. Yes, beautiful. Oh, my that's my that's Gret Gretchen made that? Oh, my goodness. Yes, isn't that gorgeous. something? It's quilted and it's uh, embroidery. Oh isn't that something? Wow. <laughs> gorgeous. That is just gorgeous. Oh my God! Bit on that thing, for well, sure. Patty, do you want me to send it to you? Um, you can if you want to, uh, and we will. Uh, I sure. need to. I want to get an order from you of a couple of things anyway. So maybe why don't we wait and do it at the same time? Okay. Or maybe you need to get on a plane and deliver it to Florida, and I'll make sure Patty gets it. <laughs> 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 well, she'll have to wait till after Friday. <laughs> yeah, we I can't fly until after Friday. Well, you shouldn't fly at all right now. Yeah, well. stay off the plane. Stay home. Stay home and be safe. Do fly time. Yep. Yeah. Or quilting or anything, but don't travel. I'm not going anywhere. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> um, did anybody tie that one? Gerald still tying. Mary Beth, did you tie it? Oh, I passed. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize anyone was tying it. I was rushing through it because I thought. David, did you tie it? I did, but right. it doesn't look. It doesn't look like um, like Susan. <laughs> hey, no, that looks great. Oh, I that, love the purple. That's the idea, I, though, I, to have that that messy yeah. CDC. Because it looks like that shuck, so it you that is per that is great. Yeah, that that'll catch. That'll Susan catch fish did. on the White River this time of year. I think it looks Susan. better than mine because it has more CDC mess going on. Well, I I just kind of wrapped that. I couldn't get it to look as good as yours, so I just kept messing with it. And uh, then I put too much, as you said, I put too much dubbing on, you know, for the that purple. So, but anyway, well, I'll talk. give it a try. I think it will catch fish and I will trade yours for mine. <laughs> well, I think it will work on these stalker fish. After it all, was it Patty that said I just need to take dog food? I <laughs> know. <laughs> well, it's appellate food, it's fish food. <laughs> fish food, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize anyone was going to tie that when I just slowed down. Can I yeah, spotlight you, you, Gerald? Yeah. There you go. Uh, Oh, no, that all right. We got some bottom right. mountain dubbing. Yeah. yeah, I like that yeah, one. Nice. Uh, you want that messy CDC going everywhere. Yeah. That's great. When you do the CDC, you don't want a real heavy wing on it because it'll stick together. Actually, this is so flowy because you're not going to put any dressing on this because it's this yeah. is fish wet. It's a it's a nymph, so you don't need to put any dressing on it, and it'll just be flowy in the water, which is what you want because yeah. that that wing. That casing, that pupil casing is breaking up as they're emerging. Right. So that looks great. It looks really good. Yeah. Normally you do them on your notes, size 18 to 24. Not this. Okay. The, the little CDC, uh, the, the little CDC pops and I'm sorry, the, this pale morning duns, the BWOs, I do them normally quite small because usually yeah. that's what you see. Okay. So the one you, you know, did is really a size 14? No, no, the one I did, the second fly was a size 14. The first fly, that was a 16. No, no, I'm sorry. I should have said, so if the second fly is a size 14. I normally do a size 14 on that. But, you know, caddises come in different sizes. I could actually get some caddises well, people was, out if you'd like to see them. I was saying if it was a size 18, it would take me a half an hour to get the bead on. <laughs> no, I mean, there, <laughs> I mean, there are caddises that are quite small, but... Um, the pupa tend to be bigger than the adults, and the larvae are bigger okay. than the adults, 
and they're, they're they basically look like little grubs the the, yeah. the larvae and the and the pupa do um so they're generally bigger than the adults so this is actually the one i tied is actually size 12 so you could see okay. um but if you guys wanted to sit around i'll drag out i have some some larva of our american granums and i can get them out and they're actually the actual insects and i could get them out and you can see them and compare them to the size of this. Oh, they're uh, huge. Up here, we have them in the spring, they're huge. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. That, yeah, they're, they can be quite large, yeah. And so you could tie this in any size you want to match okay. what, what caddis larva you have or caddis pupa you have. Because I'm saying if I have to do a size 18 with my eyesight and a bead, it's going to be a half hour. Nope. <laughs> you got those great big caddises up there. You time to match those big caddises. And Susan, uh, Sherry wants to know, um, how do you fish the drift and retrieve? Um, actually, this, I usually fish it under, a, under an indicator, the, the, the second fly, the pupa. Okay. But you could, you could fish it without, actually, you could fish this. You could swing this. Um, and you could swing it as a, as a companion to a wet fly if you wanted, and then you wouldn't have, um, you would not have a, an indicator, but you would swing it and then let it kind of settle and then sort of just lift your rod up so that it would, so that it would have an action where it looks like it's trying to swim up, right? Because it'll sort of, it'll drift along and then it'll try to swim up and then it'll drift along and try to sw swim up. So you could swing it and then let it every now and then just slightly lift your your rod or just let it drift downstream and every now and then slightly lift your rod not too far though because you have to realize this is a little insect and it can't swim very far in any direction at a, at a time right because it's a small little insect so a little little bitty lifts on your rod but and again that would imitate the the caddis trying to swim up because obviously they have currents they can't just swim straight up like a rocket they, they have the currents that they have to get through. So they are gonna drift along in the current and, and make attempts to swim upwards, if that makes sense. Well, we'll have to get you to do that one night for us. Uh, instead of tying, we'll do the, which yeah, goes right along with tying. We'll do the, uh, your program one night. Okay, either that or, you know, you, we could do it for Monday night thing as well. You did it in the spring, right? Pardon? You did it in the spring, didn't you? Yeah, Ann Miller did a presentation. Ann yeah. Miller. Yeah, I have a different presentation. Oh, okay. I did my presentation here locally for North Arkansas fly fishers. Yeah. Yeah. Susan, is there a particular type of indicator you like to use with that nymph? I personally like the twist on indicators. Um, if you want, I'll go, I can grab some real quick. And the reason I like them is because, um, let me grab one. Um, let's see if I can find. What are we tying next week, Patty? I don't know, I'm clueless, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I, hey Sally, help me out! It to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mary Beth, thank you. Mary Beth, leaving us? No, she just was thanking us. Oh, okay. Oh, it says I'm tied. Oh, well, there you go. I knew oh, that. Oh. I, was <laughs> I don't know if that's right or not, but if it is, uh, we will tie a crawdad. <laughs> Actually, I think it has something else on the website. Okay. I'm having trouble getting this to connect again. Huh. And then our next week is Peggy Brenner, and then after that, we do our, uh, our uh, black tie night where we tie something that has black on it and we're dressed up. Uh -huh. we want. Which night is that, Patty? Oh, this That's day. what? Which, which day is that or night? That would be uh, the 29th because yep. we won't tie the week of Christmas. No, nope. okay. so we have, a, we have a black tie affair, so. That's right. Dress up, bring your champagne and tie your favorite <laughs> black fly. <laughs>
You put on your best fishing outfit. And you don't even have to put on <laughs> bottoms because we don't see it. <laughs> but don't forget and uh, stand <laughs> up. Let, yeah, don't stand up and say, let me show you what I tie on for an indicator and then we'll all be surprised. <laughs> Okay, I've got if are we waiting? Oh, I was gonna have some trivia. Never mind. Okay, oh. this is a twist oh. on indicator. It's made by lightning strike. I suppose I should have looked for a package. 